um, my husband at two of the houses that we've lived in since we've been married, he has created a butterfly garden, researched all the plants, does he's good on like lots of research, and then he plants them, and then watch, I'd be like, oh, there's a monarch, there's a monarch, and then mm. like a butterfly, and then we all run out there, and, and then the neighbors come out, and everybody's yeah. like the butterfly guy, and he has like a little sign, but so it's so interesting, the science of plants, like certain plants attract certain, yeah. and my husband says, I don't know if this is true, that there's like a, it's it's good for the planet to yeah. encourage the butterflies. Well, all of our pollinators need um, help. Basically, there are so many insects in decline because they, you don't know, need um, more of our native plants. They need um, food plants that um, pollination plants like the butterfly bush provide them. This is food for those insects and they're the beneficial insects. They're the insects that are um, pollinating all our other food plants. So, you if we don't have enough of them, yeah. oh, we got problems because we're going to go hungry. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, planting something like this, this is a butterfly bush, is our three-in-one uh, buddleia, which the very unique thing about that you'll notice is that we have purple and white and pink blooms all seemingly on one plant. But the little secret here is it's not really one plant. It's actually three plants, but they're planted in such a way that they look like one plant. And so you're actually getting the vigor and growth of three plants, the blooms of three plants, and it looks like one. So this so, is the three in one. So Three um, in one. So this yeah. is how it comes to you, right? This is how it comes to you. Okay. And if you look closely, you can see there are actually three plants in there, but their roots are all like together. Ah. And, uh, growing together and you're gonna get all three different plant um, bloom colors so um, the other great thing about this I mean I love the butterfly bush because it has this beautiful silvery foliage to me it's I love a little bit of a wilder garden you know yeah. like a oh, little yeah. more like rambunctious yep. and mm -hmm. out of control and yes. a little you know that's exactly uh, what my husband's garden looks like yeah looks, I mean it's, it, it does it's it looks nature like a wild yeah, yeah it like, does it's like nature amplified yeah. kind of thing I love that and that's what this plant does this is a real centerpiece if you're going for a a, a pollinator garden like your husband yeah um, this would be one of your centerpiece plants I mean right. it's gonna get a little bit bigger um, it's a shrub it's a perennial it will come back year and year, year out um, so what kind of again. guarantee does your company do for this type? a whole year a whole year a whole year so you're gonna go all the way through the winter if it doesn't come back after the winter you just call us up we'll replace it again this is the brochure that will come with it that has our number on it um, the shipping though this is gonna ship when you should plant it. That's how we do all of our plants. We ship it, ship it when, um, when you're ready to plant. And yeah, we do all the work for you. Basically, you know that you're supposed to plant it because it arrives at your door. Look at it in Florida, it's like next week. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the minute you exactly. get it. And way it. up where I live, it's almost May. It's, it's almost so, May, yeah. that's so, so interesting. And that's because the ground is hard, but also it's not necessarily safe to ship things because right. it might freeze. Freeze on the way. All that kind of stuff. Um, some of the other things, like we have tomatoes coming up, they are very temperamental. So we know all those things. And again, we're trying right. to make it super easy for you, the gardener, to be successful. So look at this. Oh, this it's is so beautiful. Stunningly beautiful. This is a real centerpiece focal point of your garden it can be planted in a pot it can be planted in the ground it doesn't matter oh it can These be in a pot tough as nails plants they're are they? very tolerant of drought um, they're very easy to establish what about heat and heat oh really? yeah oh really oh, just, a, just a little little thing um, about plants if you see a plant has silvery kind of leaves like these yeah silvery that's that's a plant telling you hey I like hot and sun that's their really? ad adaptation to to being able to handle that so that's interesting when you see silver leaves you kind of know Oh, that's a hot sunny plant and that has um, this plant has silvery leaves I love silvery leaves by the way because so many of our plants have just that green you know right and right. green on green on green on green can sometimes get a little boring when we want to have right. interest in our garden and design something especially beautiful it's really nice to have a leaf that breaks up that right. monotony these are kind and of like a little fuzzy they're a little fuzzy too that's <laughs> yeah. part of its adaption to keeping oh. that moisture the fuzzy kind of helps it keep the moisture in and um, and and tolerate that heat without this, shriveling up this is so fascinating I wish I I mean I love hosting these shows because I'm learning so much. I hope you guys at home are learning a lot. Maybe you are, have more of a green thumb than I do and know all this. What is the maintenance like? How how do I, I get this home? Do I put this ground up to put fertilizer in it? Like, what do I have to do? You know, it's always nice to fertilize um, your plants. Something like this, though, is very tolerant of poor soils, of dry, of heat. Uh, th this is one of the most tolerant, tolerant <laughs> plants. Uh, I ignore mine completely. 
<laughs> nice. And, and up north. I think I might be able to handle yeah. this one. <laughs> up north, these will die back all the way to the ground, but the rootstock will remain alive and then it will throw out all new um, branches every every spring they are a woody plant so you'll notice down here they won't necessarily die back all the way because it doesn't get cold enough but they'll just keep getting bigger and kind of more the 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 woody branches that right sustain through the winter will just get thicker and stronger and you know more established and you'll just get more and more blooms if you find that you you know need it to be a different shape or size you can prune that you oh you can you can absolutely prune it can you um, make it in the shape of like a dinosaur if you like sure <laughs> Like, is it, what do you call those topi topiary? Can you make it over? But I can like, I kind of like it, it like back. this, but yeah. sure. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I have the capability to, to create that you kind of sculpture. That. But this is, this is so beautiful. It's under $20, $6.65 to get home. Um, 828098. And again, it's going to attract butterflies. Yes. This and bees and everything. It's not just, I mean, we call oh, it butterfly bush because it is good but for the pollinators. butterflies. But pollinators. Pollinators in general. You'll also find that it, yeah. Yeah. heavily attracts hummingbirds. They love this. Oh, they get their really? little tongues right down in all these little flowers. Ooh. Yeah, that's another thing. Just to say, when you see a plant like this that has these big, yeah. plant, you know, it's like lots of little flowers right? looking like one big flower, they tend to be um, really attractive to pollinators. Because it, it, it's like a million little flowers all in one big flower. Oh. So, you know, lots of little I'm learning about spots. literally the birds and the bees right now. <laughs> exactly. I thought I knew everything, but uh, Rochelle nope. has taught me more. <laughs> all right. Um, speaking of... Uh, feeling better. Let's go over to the special that Andrew 